Hello and welcome to a Train Sim Classic video. I'm Lewis, uh, aka Middle and Muddler, and today we are on the new released Just Trains uh, Buxton Peak Forest uh, expansion. Extension. Uh, we're today going to be having a look at the Buxton line. So that's the line from Buxton Station um, up to technically Manchester, particularly, but the new section is from Buxton to Hazel Grove as Hazelgrove was already included in the Hope Valley extension that came out a little while ago. I think it was last year Hope Valley came out, maybe a little bit earlier than that. So this is a brand new expansion that's come out this week. It's priced at £21.99, uh, and it includes the passenger line that I've just mentioned, which is from Buxton to up to Hazelgrove, where it joins the cord that comes from the Hope Valley. Uh, and then that line runs up to Stockport and then on up to Manchester Piccadilly. Uh, and then it also includes the line from uh, Chinley from currently in Hope Valley, the route ended at the Chinley Viaducts. And uh, this extension now extends south of Chinley Viaducts and takes you down through uh, Peak Forest where Tunstead Quarry is. And then it also loops around to Buxton, just over, comes in just to the right here, um, on part of the old uh, Monsall Trail, which was the original Midland Railway line to Buxton from Ambergate. It now ends at Matlock, which is obviously already available in the Durham Valley expansion. Uh, but the line's now seven at Matlock, and then it rejoins at the Peak Forest Junction of the Monsall Trail, and then runs up to Buxton. And then there is also the little branch from. Buxton here, which runs down to Hinlow and Dowlow quarries as well. So there's a lot of freight in this uh, expansion. Hopefully we'll have a look at that another time. Because today we're just going to be having a look at the passenger side. So we're in a 150 slash one Northern Rail. We've got another unit behind us as well. And this is my first drive of the uh, passenger line. So this will be quite fun to have a first look. Also a fun thing you may have noticed camera keeps moving a little bit like this i've recently invested in a track ir and that came this week actually so this is my third ever drive i think using track ir so it seems to be working really well i i really like it i think it really adds to the immersion the fact that i can i can look to the right and i look to the right in the cab look all the way over to the right or i can look to the left and look out the window and you do the same looking up looking down one of the big things that i was really excited for this is i like to drive without the heads up display and one of the worst things i find is having to have the, either the field of view sets fo so far back or having to have the view constantly down like this so you can see your speedo uh whereas with the track ir now just have a quick glance down at your speedo so that's gonna be a fun little feature for this video as well and i have to say it's been a really cool investment so far really adds to the immersion so Let's get underway with this scenario. I'm also going to be using a number of TS controllers products throughout this. So I'll be driving with the power brake controller. Uh, I've got the AWS button, uh, the door panel lever and the flexi brake as well. So just for that extra little bit of immersion, I've got all those extra controllers running too. So you may hear them a little bit in the background uh, if they pick on the microphone. So let's get started. Let's read the briefing. Good morning, driver. Today you are to work this pair of Class 50, 150, sorry, slash 1s to Manchester Piccadilly under the head code of 2 Bravo 05. Prepare your train and allow the passengers to board in time for the 0702 departure. Be sure to consult with the F1 briefing for any details and stopping patterns, as this service is not scheduled to call at all stops. So you may have seen this scenario has been run a few times already if you've been keeping track of the books and Peak Forest released, because quite a few other people have either done it on Twitch or on YouTube, but I'm going to have my own look anyway. Uh, I've modified the weather. I have set it to use the Armstrong Powerhouse Sky and Weather Enhancement Pack 2, so, uh, and I've added on high cloud, so we'll have, I also have the Cloud Enhancement Pack, so it will just be a random cloudscape that's on. I've not set a particular one, but anyway, let's get underway. So, first things first, it said, let's open the doors. Ah, even though I've closed it, it still paused. There we go. I wonder why there's no sound. Let's open the doors. Doors are open, signals off ahead, so we don't need the DRA on. Let's get the cab set up, that's the master key. And that serves into neutral. And let's switch off our DRA because I can see the signal is clear ahead. I'll just pull the 
camera field of view back a tiny bit. Feels a little bit too close. That's slightly better. So let's flick the instrument lights on. Uh, brake test, we'll just put it into full service. And then let's just check out our lights. Uh, let's turn off the headlights, turn on the markers, and there's the headlights. Sorry, turn off the tail lights is what I should have said. Uh, destination indicator, I don't think we can do that. Let's just have a quick check of the manual. In fact, no, it'll be fine. I'll leave it. So, while we're loading passengers, let's have a quick jump out and a quick pause and just have a quick look at Buxton Station. So, this is Buxton Station, which is the southern terminus of the Buxton branch line, unsurprisingly. It's a cool little station, uh, three roads with a middle road as your stabling point. You may spot the little arch at the back here. So, this is part of the old original London Northwestern railway terminus so there would have been a canopy um off of this arch in the side here if we just turn the camera and have a proper look there would have been a canopy extended off of this and overall train shed would have come up to where the building is here uh, that is now demolished but the uh, building here remains the midland railway also had a station just about here uh that was very very similar had the exact same uh arch design had one of those after saying that has now been demolished you can still see some of the midland railway platform though there's this little bit here that's left in you can see the uh water crane water tower there still exists and that, that is still there t today i believe so it's still above this Al aldi car park and i believe peak rail originally started here they relayed the tracks here and it was the buxton uh, oh, Peak Buxton Steam Centre or Buxton Steam Centre, something like that. I think that was in the 90s, but yeah, obviously no longer there now. This has also all been developed, but I think the route's set in 2018, so that's why these buildings aren't here. So we'll have a quick fly back to the station. Um, one of the nice features as well is you've still got some of the old track work here to the left of the platform. And this is part of the old Buxton Traction Motive Depot that would have been in this overgrown section here. I believe this shed closed in the 90s and uh, was subsequently demolished, which is a shame it's not there anymore. There's some great photos on Flickr, though, if you want to have a look. All sorts of traction used to end up here. Uh, 31s, 25s, 45s, 47s, uh, 37s. So a lot of different traction used to come through to Buxton and obviously it would have been on the freight a lot. We have a quick look at some of the customs. Obviously this was built by Nick who built the Hope Valley line as well, uh, just trains. And so it's very similar to the Hope Valley extension if you already got that. Lots and lots of customs, really makes you feel home. A little cat as well under here and this little, uh, what would you call it? I guess it's a garden. Mural. That's more of the word I was looking for. So it's, yeah, really high quality custom assets. Really, really nice. I always like it when things are photo textures as well. You can really tell that he's been and took photos of the real stuff. There's been a lot of research done clearly on this. I, I love photo textures. I think it makes it look so much more realistic, like the real thing. And honestly, I think that's one of the incredible strengths of Hope Valley and now this expansion is the texture. And the, the assets are fantastic geometrically with the texture and so good it looks so realistic i think it's a real highlight it's one of the things i think sometimes ts can be let down with flat textures that look a bit cartoonish whereas photo textures i think you get around that we've got the buxton palace hotel here it's a shame the uh the, let the name i suppose the sign is so faded because i was in buxton three weeks ago and it's um like red neon bars for the the sign it's quite easy to see actually it's quite colorful and then we've got the buxton dome here which i believe used to be a hospital and is now part of the buxton and derby uni or college so it's uh, an educational building now we've also got the listed buxton crescent which i believe is part of the buxton spa building here as well there's uh, a nice custom there a new shops here as well they look like brand new customs i think the aldi over there is a brand new custom as well these aren't the, that one's from lincoln extension i don't know what that one's from yeah so buxton's looking really really nice um 
one of the fun things of Buxton is the amount of railway that's over here, and it's a really interesting layout. So you can see we've got the line over here. We'll just have a very quick look at this because we've had a little look at Buxton Midland Railway Station. The Buxton Midland Railway Station would have come out underneath this little viaduct here. So the viaduct here is included because it's got track on. So that runs all the way down to Hindlow and Dowlow quarries. It would originally have been uh, also the line to Ashbourne, uh, which is now the Tissington Trail, because um, the line no longer exists. Uh, but yeah, that line would have gone all the way down to Ashbourne, a bit further south of the peaks. Uh, but the middle railway would have gone under this and would have joined on to the line here. So this line is also included. This one goes all the way around uh, Peak Forest, but this was the line that would have ran on the Monsol Trail all the way down through Matlock and to Ambergate and then on to Derby. So part of the middle railway's original Manchester to Derby route, which went via uh, Ambergate, Matlock, Peak Forest, Chinley, and then on to Manchester that way. So we'll have a quick look at the map in a second let's just have a quick look at the map now there we go so i'll show you some of what i've just talked about so here we are at buxton so that's buxton station uh this is the viaduct line here and buxton curve is the line there uh, to at uh, peak forest so you can see the two curve away from each other so this little line down here is what goes to I think this one's Hindlow. Yep, that one's Hindlow Briggs. And this one's Dowlow Quarries. So two freight lines. So freight comes up this branch, uses the up relief sidings here at Buxton to run around the train and then goes back up down this line and then up through Great Rocks and Peak Forest. And then onwards up to Chinley. The original line that we've just been talking about would have carried on from this little curve here. And that would have gone all the way along through the Peak District uh, past Bakewell, Chatsworth, uh, Matt, and then down to Matlock here. So that would have joined up with this little spur here, and that was the Midland Railway. If you own the train some of Peak Forest line, that actually has that line in it, but it is now closed in real life, and there's a cycle trail called the Monsel Trail. So then, yep, yeah, if we have a look at the rest of the line that's included in the extension, this is Peak Forest over here, so all quarries down here, lots of fun freight activities. And you can see this line goes underneath the Buxton passenger line here, under again, here through the site of the old chapel on like frith central station and then you get to the viaducts which is uh, part of the line that was included in hope valley but that's uh, now fleshed out upon there's brand new customs for the viaduct and then you can either go left to manchester this way and chinley station there or right which would take you on to hope and then sheffield or you can go south down the rest of the midland main line and then the line we're going to be covering today is this line up here which is the buxton passenger line See it curves around, it really weaves through the, the landscape. It gets this section that runs parallel to the Hope Valley. So I believe the track was included to about here uh, in the Hope Valley extension originally. But now it's fleshed out properly. So there was only very, very basic scenery around this. It wasn't detailed at all, but it is fully detailed. And it's a really fun section here where we can actually see across the valley, the Hope Valley line. Um, so that's real fun and then it carries on along this section and joins up to hazel grove here so again this is part of the track that's included with hope valley extension hazel grove nothing new there it's just joining on to what already existed but we will continue from hazel grove and then we'll go up through stockport here and then up to manchester Pic piccadilly at the top so that's the top left extreme of this route now and it's a colossal route now it's a fantastic Fantastic beast with a lot of variety. So, on that note, let's get jumped back into the cab and let's get ready for our departure. The only slight downside with the track IR is that every time I look at the left screen, it does this. <laughs> <laughs> I do really like this though, like the track I was great at the immersion of being able to actually look around the cab. One of the things that I used to find annoying with the TS is having to physically drag the mouse to look around and like, I, especially with the TS controllers because I've got a hand on the throttle, hand on the brake, you don't really have a spare hand to flick and drag and move around the cab, it's not as easy. 
whereas being able to just do it by looking much much better right that's us away so down to step one oops to step three power Pulls the guard back, let him know that we've acknowledged, and we are underway. I believe it's a 25, I was thinking it might be a 15. I know for a fact we're on a very steep grade on the way out of Buxton Station, so we're going to want to get the power down quickly. Yeah, up to 20 miles an hour now. We'll just throttle back. As we reach 25. We're passing under where one of the old lines to the Midland Railway would have just passed over there. And we're passing Buxton signal box. That was Buxton number one signal box, I believe, originally. Uh, but when the Buxton number two, which I believe was the Midland Railway signal box, closed, it just became Buxton signal box. Right, we're cleared 60 miles an hour now, so we're going to get the power down. On the right there, you see the lines that are falling away from us as we're now climbing this very steep gradient that is the up relief sidings that i mentioned before that's where the freight trains from dowlow and hindlow go in and run around to then progress back up the peak forest or vice versa this is a really really steep gradient up here i believe in this the age of steam there would have been there was a lot of banking had to be done up this section Especially with the freight trains that had come from the quarries. Gently speeding up now, getting to 40 miles an hour. We probably ought to have a quick check of our briefing. Oh, there's a lovely bit of detail there. I can see a farmer with his flock of sheep going through the fence, through the gate, kind of into the field. It's very nice. One of the biggest things that I loved with Hope Valley, and I know it's going to be replicated on this, is the attention to detail that Nick, the developer, had. It really brings a sense of authenticity to the routes just above 40 so we're really struggling so our next stop is chapel on lifriff we've got a little way to go to that we'll pass through dovehold station before then uh, but we won't be stopping so we're not doing all stops i believe we'll also not be stopping at middlewood today uh but yeah so we'll be calling today at chapel on lifriff whaley bridge furnace vale new mills newtown disley hazel grove woodsmoor davenport Stockport and Manchester Piccadilly. So we're in 45 now. Still well within the 60 mile an hour limit. But we are approaching the crest. And I'm pretty sure it's mostly downhill from, from then on. It's absolutely lovely to eat at. Like, look at the hills in the distance as well. It really captures the area of the peaks beautifully. We've changed up gears, so we're still just about 45, but we need to be ready when we crest the summit. Because so we're then going to be on a downhill gradient. I think we've lost a little bit of speed at the moment. But this looks like the crest here. Yep, there's a sign for the summit. going to quite rapidly gain speed now. I think this is one of the most fun parts of this new extension. It's really going to keep people on their toes because you all the gradients. It's the same on the freight line through Peak Forest. You've really got to watch what you're doing. So I'm closing off the throttle now and we're going to start step one brake application. And this is where stuff like the TS controllers really comes into its own, because I can control throttle in one hand and I can brake in the other. Now my track IR as well to be able to glance at my speed. And this is Dove Hole Station that we're just passing through. It's a fairly little station, I'm pretty sure it doesn't check stops all the time. Get an AWS check and that is a warning for 20 miles an hour and I believe that is the 20 miles an hour. So we 
the speed restriction in the upcoming tunnel. So because we're going downhill, I'm going to put a step two brake application in. So we're really struggling to bring the speed down. I'm almost thinking we might need step three. I've never driven this line before, so I don't know how close the tunnel is. Down to 45 now. Ah, this is the tunnel here. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not this one. It's not this one. Okay, so that's fine. So this is Barmel Tunnel. Not 20 through this one. Behind 45, though, I don't remember seeing the sign for that. It's the next tunnel that's 20. So the next tunnel that we're getting to is on a very tight curve, I believe. And uh, is restricted to 20 miles an hour for trains coming down the hill from our direction, as otherwise there's a risk of the trains rocking on the curve, and then they, uh, there's a risk they'll scrape the, the tunnel walls. So that's why the speed restriction's in place. We're at 30 now. That's the tunnel. Right, so we'll just put step two back in. Make sure we get down to 20. There's the speed sign. We're at 25. And there's 20. And this is Eve's tunnel. Yeah, it's a pretty sharp grade through this one. He's let out the brake, and I see the speed's already creeping back up, so keep the brake back in. Pitch black, we can't see the end because it's such a sharp curve. Obviously, we are travelling through the tunnel pretty slowly at 20 miles an hour. As you can see, I'm just constantly having to check the speed. I'm just putting the brake on, taking it back off. Here's the end of the tunnel, at least. Hopefully that's enough to release it now. We need to keep an eye out for if the speed limit jumps back up, because I'm hoping it will pretty soon. But we also need to keep in mind that we will likely be approaching Chapel on the Frith pretty shortly. Cool, that is a cracking view. Oh, we're back up to a 45. There was no sign for that. I'm guessing that's how the line is in real life. So there's going to be some route knowledge to be learnt on this. And Chapel is 0.6 of a mile away, so not far. We're going to gain speed pretty quick here, I think. That is a beautiful view. The trees we can see just over there, you can see there's some 3D trees, that will be part of the Peak Forest line. 0.3 left. Let's go step two at that. I'm trying to look out for where the Peak Forest line is, it should be just under us somewhere. Ah, there it is. Passing over the Peak Forest line now, you can see it just down there. Coming in hot here. I remember there was a whistle sort board just before here, I saw it on the heads up display. Oh, we are coming in way too hot. Way, way too hot. Let's see if we can. Uh, we're going to slightly overrun, but I think we'll still be okay. Terrible starts. We've been caught out massively by the hill there. Doors and just drop into neutral. Yeah, so we are at least still in the platform, but that would be team biscuits. Oh, so we got the wrong incorrect uh, destination blind on as well. There we are, Manchester Piccadilly, that's better. Let the passengers know where we're going. So, this is Chapel on Lifrith, home of Ferodo, who uh, make car brake pads. They're based in Chapel. Really, really nice little station. A lot of the uh, details have been modelled. This uh, I was reading online earlier, actually. There's uh, 
they've got like a friends of chapel on the thrift station and uh they created these like advertising boards like in the, kind of in the style of the old british railways advertisement boards i believe there's a few of these around the station here you are here's some more it's advertising all the uh local landscape and things to see which is really nice it's just great to see them captured in TS. It's great to see something like with such detail put in. Now, what I did want to look for is whether a little monument to the accident that happened here has been put in. I don't think it has. I think in 1957, I might be wrong, I'm 1967. I think it's 1957. There was a uh, 8F coming from Buxton and uh, the brake pipe failed. Uh, so the loco came out of control and it hit the rear of a freight, another freight train on, on the line towards Manchester, uh, right in the middle of the station. So there was an accident here. And uh, there's recently been a little monument, I guess, put on the station where it's uh, a little almost flower tub and it's got one of the buffers from one of the actual wagons that was involved in the accident. And uh, like a, I don't know if it's a spring or something like that, part of the suspension. Yeah, this is really nice. Uh, chapel on the thrift station is away from chapel itself. This is chapel itself over here. Uh, the original, the main station would have been on the Peak Forest line, which you can see here. This is the freight line. Uh, the main station would have been up here. But that is closed now. So let's wait for the doors to close. We'll pay a bit more attention on the next stop because that was bad, Lewis. Not good. Not a good start. Okay, that's that. Put back into forward. Don't think we'll get a guard's buzzer because our doors weren't open. Put a bit of power on and then release step one. It's one of the biggest things with this line is that you really got to get the power on while leaving in step one and then release the brake once the power is on so that you don't end up rolling back. We're, we're out of here like a rocket. Look, this is, tells you the grade we're on downhill. 1 in 85. So, yeah, we're already up to 25 mile an hour. Got to blast the horn as well when we left. So, our next stop will be Whaley Bridge. We are rapidly gaining speed. This is lovely. It's... Uh, Early morning scenario, this one. It's beautiful landscape. So you can see the 3D trees. And we're speeding already. So you can see the speed 3D trees just slightly up ahead to the right over there. That's where the line's going to go. We're, we're going to curve around there. We're going to curve right round to that little bit over to the right ahead of us. I'm going to leave this in step one breaks, I think. It's not killing too much speed, yeah. Let it out for a second. Allow the train to coast up to 50. Put it back into brake. So we've got 2.7 miles to Whaley Bridge, so a little bit of time. It's absolutely stunning. I think it's incredible how they've managed to actually capture the feel of the Peak District on this route and on Hope Valley as well. TS isn't great with its render distance, I find. I don't think, I think it's normally really good with that sort of thing, but JT have done a great job on this. And definitely Nick, who's developed it, like, it's incredible how well the, how good the scenery looks and how well the scenery works at a distance. It doesn't even affect frame rates. We're getting, what, 60 FPS at the moment? And I'm recording, and I'm running track IR, like, fantastic. Let's 
I love the little details like the sheep. Oh, that's lovely, that little culvert there as well. Whaley Bridge is at the bottom of this descent, I think. It's certainly on a level section. The fact that we're going to be approaching on downhill, though, tells me that I need to prepare my brakes much further in advance this time. This is stunning. Honestly, I think it's incredible to think this game is as old as it is and it can still look this good. I think it's amazing the amount of add-ons that have come out recently within the past year or two that really show there's life in the old girl yet. And the variety of stock we have now as well is just incredible. It really does mean you can run pretty much anything. I'm start braking now. Yeah, we're, we're really struggling to take speed off of this. I think this will be okay. I'm thinking it might just be alright at this sort of speed. But we're still, we are struggling. We're only just down to 35. I know that we're close to the station because that's where that little building is a gym. I know that's right before the station. Okay, we're not looking too bad. We're down to 25 now, and I can see the platform, so I'm going to drop to step one. Maybe a little bit early this time. Overcautious. This is really nice. I'm loving the detail of the road sign on the left there. That looks great. I love stuff like road signs. I feel like it really adds to the detail. Okay, so we're looking for the four car stop mark. I love all the different platform textures as well. Like you can see there's like a little road section here. Amazing. We are one fifty stop mark there. This is one of the great things with uh our cars. I can have a, a little look. Ah, we're not quite there. Never mind, it was better than last time. Better than last time. So, this is Whaley Bridge. It's better than last time, isn't it? Another really nicely made asset this is. I'm really liking this. One of the most interesting is this is a grade 2 listed pub, I believe. So, it's, it's a closed bed and breakfast, but it's a grade 2 listed building. So, it's... Uh, can't be demolished. It's preserved. Oh, doors closed right Let's pause. It's really nicely done, this is. I'm not sure about the little crucifix here, the cross. Not sure what that's for. This is the back of the Whaley Bridge station. I don't know whether the station building's in use or whether you can only enter and exit that way. That says waiting room, so it looks like the station building is possibly open at time. Oh, I like that. It's got London North Western Railway uh, clock and evidently made at Derby, Midland Clockwork, so that's nice. This is really nice. You can't quite read the times, but uh, really, really cool. I like that. See whoever took the photo there. This footbridge is really nice. Well, that's great texture in to do that. I love stuff like this. Well, when people pay attention to stuff like just beyond the line side, I don't know, it's a, a real favourite of mine because it just makes it feel so much more like the real thing. Like, look at that. That's a cracking little scene. No train, no train required. 
It just gives you that feeling of life for me. That's what makes a route. Just those little extra details. Stuff like that as well. Look at that. That's great. Derelict sofa and mattress and all the wheelie bins. Little concrete blocks. Pallets. Really, really well done. It's amazing. And I love all these little proper signs that clearly at the real station. So first Whaley Bridge Brown is um an edible garden, so I guess this would have potatoes and carrots and stuff in it. And likewise, so yeah, I really like how all these fish have these little groups and uh unique signs. Right then. To the next stop. I think we're on level at the moment, but I think we're going to start a downhill grade again, pretty shortly. We're coming up to the, the, a really nice, I believe our next stop is New Mills New Town. I know it's Furnace Vale actually, and then it's New Mills New Town. But we're coming up to the section that runs parallel to the Hope Valley, so that's going to be really cool to see. I'm looking forward to that bit. A 50. Our oh, furnace is coming up pretty quick here, so we're under a mild furnace fail now. I love all these little access points that get modelled as well. Don't really tend to see that done in a route, especially not like a dovetail route. Whereas this goes to all the efforts to do things like that. I love it. It just really makes the tracks I feel not bland. Okay. Start breaking now and see if that's alright. We see new mills already on the heads up display. Oh, this is lovely. Look at this. All the little bungalows. And I'm Pretty sure that'd be the A6 there on the left, that road. A6 goes from Buxton up to Manchester. Goes all the way back to Matlock as well, actually. I was thinking we're slowing down a bit soon, but we might be bob on for this. Yeah, 25. I think we're probably a little bit early, actually, on the brake still. And not break off for a second. One of the best features about this route, 74 signaling. That beautiful. There are some colour lights, but it's mostly semaphores from what I've seen. This is where the flexi brake lever comes into its own. I can just focus on where I am on the platform and move the lever over my left hand and really feather the brake. So step one, we can go up to step two if we need to, and then when we stop, we can go to full application. Let's have a quick look at Furnace Vale. Straight away, loving this. It's got an LMS Furnace Vale sign, so that's probably one of the originals. It looks like it's the original signal box. Um, I know that a lot of the signal boxes on this line got upgraded in the early 2000s to get PVC and new windows, uh, cladding and windows even. But you can see like the old brick down here where the old windows would have been and stuff. So see it's uh, an original box. This is the station house. I think it's a private dwelling now, but I think it might also be a listed building. I think that was originally the station master's house, that one. Oh, it's got station house in it. Nice to see the, the level crossing working. There's a lot of traffic waiting here. It's pretty cool. Another one with a lovely footbridge as well. This is really nicely done. I love the colours of it as well. Like the same as the last one. Really nice colours. It's a fairly small station, this one, Furnace Vale. I think my favourite thing with the fact that 
with the just trains middle and mainline routes is every station gets custom like with a dovetail route it's not guaranteed i really love the shift that train sims had within the past few years that every station gets custom especially with this route stops the stations from feeling too bland and stuff like that makes you feel like you're actually at the real station And I've, I've not travelled on this line myself, so I can't attest that this is 100% accurate, this line. But uh, going on Just Trains' past experience, I know they're very, very, very good. Very good key knife detail. When they did do the stations down at me, which are also on middle and main line, they are spot on. There we go. We're a bit more on it that time. I'd got the uh, the breakdown to step one and the power on before the guard buzzed. Mm. Quite a little cone on the wall there, that's a cool little detail. So, if we remember rightly, when we looked at the heads up display, it is pretty close to New Mills Newtown, so we need to stay on it. Just seeing the start of the canal down to the right there as well. Get exactly what the core canal is. I think it's the High Peak Canal. Oh, there you go. Look, there's Furnace Vale Moorings. Here we go. We've got a opposite service. Doing a little two at the horn. 156 and 150 last shot. Fun fact is that uh, I believe. 150s and 156s do the bulk of the passenger services along this line. Uh, um, 153s and 142s are actually not allowed on this line. They're not cleared. I believe it's because of the intensive gradients. Uh, their engines can't cope. Uh, they were not powerful enough for it. So I think 158s are have maybe worked down here before, but don't don't anymore really just 150s and 156s but you do get charters rail tour charters down here i think we're going to slow down way too fast here i think we're on a slight uphill grade and that's playing to our favor with the brakes i'm i'm really early again here we are coming to new mills new town Pretty sure there's been a goods yard on the right here based on the fact that the footbridge goes all the way over to a boundary wall. Here we are, this is New Mills New Town. This marks the point where we are joining um, parallel to the Hope Valley line because if you know the Hope Valley or you own the Hope Valley extension, you'll know that there's New Mills Central on that line. have a quick jump out this is new mills new town for the uh, you see the signs for the millennium walkway and the set valley trail so the millennium walkway is actually included on the hope valley line and it's right below uh the station so again really nice custom model really nicely done textures are just brilliant i think that is one of nick's real strong points is it's incredible texturing I think one of the nicest things as this middle and main line route is developed is the Just Trains common asset library has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and so many more high quality assets are in there compared to when Sheffield Derby first started. That was first released. It is really nice to see how it's come on and how self-sufficient this route's become. Yeah, this is why I think this is where I think there would have been a yard because you can see this footbridge extends so I would, I would expect there would have been a goods yard there and then let's have a look at what i was talking about about being parallel i forgot to have a look on the last section line where we could have seen you actually see from looking out the cab a little bit of the hope valley there and so you can see the fire duct here that's the hope valley line that goes via stockport and that is literally 
getting like real close to us. So where we are on this curve, so our trains here will carry on down this curve. We've got the Hope Valley Stockport line down here. Uh, so that goes that way to Stockport and then goes this way to join up to New Mills Junction and on to Chinley. That's where the East Midlands trains and Transparent Express services run. And then you've also got at New Mills Junction branching off, you've got the line that goes through New Mills Central and then on through Romley, uh, Bradbury. Oh, it also goes up to Woodley, but that's not included in this route. <laughs> uh, and then this also carries on to Manchester Piccadilly. It's another way in. And there's, you can see the Millennium Walkway down there. So that's the Millennium Walkway that we're talking about. That curves right down below the line here. Again, fantastic modelling from Hope Valley. Yeah, you can see from here, you can see our line up here. We wouldn't have really been able to see this before because it wasn't detailed, but it is now. So you can just about make out where our line is. So admittedly, we're a bit high up here. Whereas if you go a bit further back to New Mills Junction, there you are. You can see that that's where our line is. You can see the cutting there. It is that easy to see. You know, that close. Which I think is incredible. I know I saw Tom saying that it'd be quite cool if you look at the timings, you may be able to find some services that run on the Buxton line as something passing on the Hope Valley. That'd be quite cool for scenarios. Let's just have a quick look at our stopping pattern after this. I didn't realise we were at time, so we failed on times, oh dear. All right, so we've only got Disney left, and then it's Hazel Grove, and we're off the books in line and just running into Manchester after that. We were on a bit of an incline coming up here, so I'm going to put some power on. There we go, nice. We got going well. I imagine rainy autumn scenarios and snowy winter scenarios are going to be a challenge on this route. Can't quite make out the line. And there's just a few too many trees. I'm re really looking. See the canal down below us. There we are, I can see it now. Got a glimpse of it. So we've got just over a mile to Disley. I don't know if we're ascending or descending the gradient here. It's, uh, yeah, it's not too bad a gradient, 1 in 235. Looks like we're climbing at the moment. I'm just going to power off. I also like to drive without the heads up display, but obviously I've not, not driven this line before. So it's a bit more of a challenge to drive without the heads up display. I need to run the line a few times and get some route learning on my belt. Okay, so we are still picking up speed at this. We're really high up at this. This is great. Like, look how we can see down into the valley below us. Leave the heads up display on while I work out where I need to break. I'm gonna go for a little bit later on this one, just see. If I can get my braking a bit better this time. I believe this is Disley Tunnel we're about to go through. I believe this carries the high peak canal over us. Either this one does or the next one does. I love that little bit of grass there, that's nice. We've definitely done better this time on slowing. I see a stop mark. No, so I'm going to have to kind of guess. 
Uh, looks like we got all the training. Nice, here we are at Disley. It's been lovely in the morning sun. You can imagine this is going to be a nice warm summer's day. Yeah, we are fine. Yeah, this is Disley Station. Oh, I love this. The little AstroTurf pitch and the uh, speed bump almost in the car park. Cracking that they go to the length of even like modeling all this. Like, this must be a custom asset going all out there. Disley Station, it's got Greater, Mas Greater Manchester Passenger Transport Express, I believe, Brandon, that is. I love stuff like this, it's great. So, you are here, Platform 2 of Disley. Fishing Lake up there. Fountain, the Ram's Head. Mary's Church. There's the Peak Forest Canal. Oh, so what went... No, so it wasn't the canal that went over us in the tunnel. I thought one of the tunnels did carry um, the canal, but it might be one of the tunnels further on, actually. And then you see that canal goes to Marple, which if you know the Hope Valley line, well, you'll know exactly where that canal is. But yeah, this is really nice. Again, it's just the attention to detail. Like, look at this. He's gone to the effort of putting the walls in, like, the little roads for these houses. That's so cool. This, that pub. Ah, this is the pub from Beast and custom for Beast and put from the station. What well, you can hardly see that. You only see it in winter, spring. So, fair enough. This is, oh god, look at that, look at that view. Looking back towards New Mills, you can see where New Mills was because there's the factory at New Mills. Incredible, look at that. I think that's one of the, th my favourite things about the Middle Main Line route is the fact that you've got incredible scenery on this section. It's just amazing, hilly and challenging. And then you've got the actual Middle Main Line bit as well, which is world's way. It's flat, like it, it Main Line running. It's uh, completely different. You've got the section out to, well, you've got the, the branch line up to Dirt Valley, the Dirt Valley branch, which is up to Matlock, which is similar to this, but not quite the same, because obviously it's a single line branch. And then you've got the line out to Lincoln as well, and that's another different kettle of fish. Just amazing, this is. Oh, yeah, look, that. that. Oh, it doesn't quite go all the way to Marple. I was thinking maybe that was going to go all the way to Marple, but. Doesn't quite, but I, there is probably a massive gap to Marple. I was thinking we were closer than we are. But for a second, I thought he'd continue the high peak canal all the way to Marple, knowing his level of detail. I love how dirty the white line is here. And we're away. Our next stop will be Hazel Grove, where I'll end this video because the rest will just be running on the already available Hope Valley line. I'll do another video another day where it's just the actual run all the way rather than looking at all the stations, stopping and looking at all the stations and chatting. I love the sound before, so we've got distant here. So we will pass through uh, Middlewood Station, I believe it is. But we won't be stopping there. My favourite things about having the power brake controller is that you get to actually push the horn. I think we're descending again now. Plenty of whistle boards from the look of it, which is fun. Fine warning for something there. After a return trip to see what that says. I'm loving this lighting. You can really, the sun's coming up. 
It's getting a bit lighter. What time is it now? 31 minutes past 7. Oh, we are on a grade. It's 1 in 60 down here. Ah, this might be the tunnel that carries the canal over. Not actually losing that much speed with the brake on. This be Middlewood Tunnel or something like that? What tunnel are you? It is Middlewood Tunnel. Just pop out and have a quick look, make sure I'm not going entirely mad. Because there is also... Ah, there we go. Look, there's the canal. I knew it. I think that goes to Macclesfield that way. And when also what I wanted to show you around here that I know from seeing a little bit of stuff back here is this is the site of Middlewood Junction. So you can see, and I think this again is one of Nick's real strengths is that he models all the old railway lines and he always puts in these little farm tracks so you know it's an old railway line. Yeah, this was a uh, junction here. So if you watch, if you go on YouTube and look for Don Coffey, uh, he does cab ride videos. And he's got one from Buxton to Manchester Piccadilly, or Buxton somewhere. Um, and he's got a great photo when he gets this section of um, how this would have looked in steam days with the actual junction. Yeah, that would have curved around there, and that went to Macclesfield that way. Um, and then also the line went over here as well. I think this line, you can see how this goes over Middlewood Station here. This line that went this way, I believe, went up to Marple. So, where in game currently you have Rose Hill Marple on the Hope Valley line, and that's just a tiny little branch station. Uh, it's just the end of the line there, just that one tiny little branch station. Back in Steam days, it would have carried on over here, over Middlewood, and would have gone all the way to Macclesfield. So, really, really nice. And we'll just have a quick look at Middlewood Station as well while we're, we're here and out of the cab. So, it's a nice little station. Again, doesn't Seem to get stops from everywhere. I love the texture on that bridge. Look at that. It's beautiful. The distress on it. And it's really cleverly done as well. Because the rivets are of high enough quality that from here, like, they look 3D, but they're just photo texture. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Let's jump back in the cab, make sure we're not speeding. Not yet, but we are still on this grade, so just gonna let the brake out, keep an eye on the speed. And here we go through Middlewood Station. It's so atmospheric, this. I, I've been really impressed with TS recently when I've done drives. It's really felt so much more realistic than I ever used to. Certainly things like the Sky and Weather and Huntsman Pack and Cloud Pack make a huge difference to me. I really like the new trees included with the Just Strange Roots as well. The Orca Productions Tree Pack version 2. It's just really leafy and I really like the colour variety in them as well. I think the VP version 1 trees served the purpose. They were decent. But these are nicer. Here we are going to Norbury Hollow. So there's a tiny little signal box here on the right, which operates this little crossing. And I believe it's quite a unique crossing in that it's got little farm gates rather than um, like proper level crossing gates. I think we're going to come out on a little section here in a second. There's a bridge over the A555 road, which is right here. Uh, and this road is the eastern end of the new Manchester Airport road link. So I'm just going to jump out. Look at that game over the... Again, nice attention to detail. So yeah, this is the dual carriageway that... It's a shame that's not got a little bit more detail, because like that, that's pretty easy to see, and it's pretty open. I mean, I imagine it probably is pretty open, because it's, if it's a new, newly constructed thing, it, there probably isn't a whole lot here, but... It almost feels like there's a scenery tile missing in a way, like this, because there's so little here. And I thought there'd be at least like a roundabout. I mean, maybe it is a junction and maybe that's why it's so basic as it is, but yeah, it seems strange. 
seems really weirdly open here. Whereas the other way, that looks okay. Still kind of basic, but it's, it looks all right. I love these motorway overbridge or like dual carriageway overbridges. They're really nice. I'm assuming they're a new asset. I've not seen them before. I guess that's the same thing, yeah. Really, really nice. I like those new farm barns as well. I love the textures of this as well. That looks great. Yeah, Try and get a screenshot. The train rolling into Stockport. And that, uh, not Stockport, Hazel Grove even. That's Hazel Grove in the distance. It's down there. Oh, actually, we're closer than I thought we were. You can see the uh, Hope Valley line there. So we're reconnecting back up the Hope Valley line. This is the Hope Valley uh, line here uh, that goes on the viaduct and it goes up around the corner into, I forget which tunnel it is, this uh, long tunnel up there. And obviously the Hope Valley line would usually all come down this little cord and into Hazel Grove. Whereas we're going to come up this little section of track. So just check we're not speeding. We are not. Not yet, anyway. But we are picking up speed. And there's a 40 mile an hour restriction in 0.6 of a mile. I'm probably just going to leave the brake in step one now. Until we reach this speed restriction. Which I think I can just see the sign ahead. step two now because we're not really dropping any speed and this is nice you can see the vide up there we are green at the moment and then we go down to 40 see the edge of the park and ride car park on the right as well there's the 40 I feel like that's why I've been missing some of these speed signs they're all the old um, little yellow number ones Rather than the modern ones, they're a lot harder to catch with your eye. And here we go, we're running under the freight line. I forget where that goes. And we're coming around to Hazel Grove. This is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And we're back onto the Hope Valley metals now. Or well, certainly metals of the route that were included with the Hope Valley extension. And the electrification's about to start as well. Under the wires now. Running Hazel Grove. We have stop markers on Hazel Grove platform. Doesn't look like it. Barely in it, that's all. Bring ourselves to a halt and stop the train. So, here we are at Hazel Grove. Absolutely lovely. If you wanted to do this kind of run before, you'd have had to start at Hazel Grove and run up to Manchester Piccadilly, which is just a very short little, probably 20, 25 minute run from here into Manchester Piccadilly. Oh, this is nice. It's got the same sort of posters as what we had at. Uh, the Chapel and Frith, I think. Whereas now we've we've done a fair run already coming down to here. So I think what we'll do is we will watch our train depart uh, to end this video. So let's set it up. Yeah, the brakes releasing. Power on. It wasn't going to be me. Was not interested. You can ruin our, our video. If she's gone past, she's not very bombed. And there's the service carrying on towards Manchester. Thanks for watching, guys. This first run that I've done of the route I hope you found it interesting or useful and I'll hope 
hopefully catch you in the next one. Cheers all.